Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Thanks for tuning into the channel. We're gonna be talking about CPP for self-employed people. We're not gonna really get into the, the nuances between whether you're self-employed or whether you're incorporated, but just this idea of how does CPP work if you're self-employed? And I actually get this question quite a bit from business owners asking me, what's the most effective use of my money? Do I pay into CPP? Do I put into RSPs, tax-free savings accounts? Like what is the best use of my money? So we're gonna get into that right now. Now, if you're new to this channel, hi everybody, my name is David. I make videos for your education, for your financial enjoyment, for your, your uh, financial literacy, if you will. I think it's important that when you have more knowledge and information, you actually get to think about your retirement or whatever financial goals you might have in, an, in a more deep, meaningful way. You ask better questions and of course, then you get better outcomes. I'm an active advisor working with clients right across Canada, uh, business owners, individuals and families. So let's get into that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so and uh, share this with everybody you think needs to see us. Okay, this question actually came today from, actually not today, a few days ago, from a um, longtime subscriber. And uh, here's the question. Hey David, can you comment on a situation where a person works as a self-employed person, in this case, a massage therapist, income of about $50,000 a year, as a retirement plan, is it better to be paying into CPP or to aggressively contribute to RSP and tax-free savings accounts? So this is actually a great question. And the, your questions, by the way, help me to understand where you're at in terms of your investment knowledge, how the CPP program works, um, whether you should use RSPs and tax-free savings accounts. It's a really, it's a big dilemma for business owners as to how to use your money. So we're gonna get into this and five simple things I'm gonna share with you exactly how to actually figure this thing out and what will be uh, best for you. Okay, the first one, number one, CPP self-employed. Let's just sort of break down what does it mean when you're self-employed CPP. The Canada Pension Plan is a mandatory pension plan. Your contributions for self-employment are based on your net income of your business now, it's different, right? If you are working for someone, you're an employee, it's going to be a per, as a percentage of your salaried income, your T4 income. I'll, I'll share a slide with you just in a minute, but basically this is actually your net income after expenses. That's what that means, right? Now, to your question, Vivian, you cannot opt out of contributing to your Canada Pension Plan. Whether you're in business for yourself as a self uh, uh, sole proprietor or whether you're incorporated, you still need to pay your Canada Pension Plan. I'm gonna say that with, with a caveat. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. There is a way to get exempted out of that or to not pay into the Canada Pension Plan, but I'm gonna go through. I don't wanna to jump too far ahead. Okay, so what does this mean, Canada Pension Plan? Well, the Canada Pension Plan is based off this thing called YMP, Year's Maximum Pensionable Earnings. And for 2022, you'll see that, by the way, you'll see that in, in uh, pension plan calculations, um, certainly in a Canada pension plan. So what does it mean? On the first $64,000 of income, you can see in this slide, 64,900. Canada pension is going to tax you, we'll say. Well, they're gonna subtract a percentage of your income, I'll share with you in a second, as to uh, taking some of that money and putting it towards your Canada pension plan. In this case, it's going up in 2022. Last year, it was based off of earnings anywhere from um, $3,500 up to $61,600. Now it's going up to $64,900. That's an increase of $3,300. This is important to you because as a self-employed person, you have to pay two times that amount because you have to pay both the employer's part and the um, employee part. If you're earning more than $3,500 up to $64,900, you are contributing to Canada Pension Plan. So I would say in answer to Vivian and anybody else who's in that situation, the first thing I have to ask is, what kind of income is it? Are you paying yourself a salary? First of all, I don't know whether you're incorporated or whether you're self-employed, Canada Pension or uh, the Canada Pension Plan or the government really doesn't care whether you're incorporated or not. All they care about what kind of income you're reporting. So T4 income is really the, the, the thing here where you're getting taxed on. That's employment earnings, right? So that's, if you are a salary person paying yourself $50,000 a year, you definitely contribute to a Canada Pension Plan and you can't opt out of that. So here is the previous years. You'll see 
in 2022, we're at $64,900. You can go all the way back to 2017, it was 55,000. So they keep increasing the amount of money that the government will, the maximum amount the government will take their, the, the basing the Canada Pension Plan contributions on. You can see here that the rate is 5.7%. So if you're earning $50,000 per year and you're working for someone else, they're going to deduct up to 5.7% of your income up to 34, 34, $3,499, we call it $3,500. And that'll go towards your Canada pension, okay? If you make anything above that, nothing goes towards your Canada pension. So it's only up to that cap of that 64.9. So remember, that's your, your YMP. So it's kind of interesting if you're out working for somebody else and or you're self-employed and you want to contribute your maximum to Canada Pension Plan, make sure that you have at least a $65,000 salary, a T4 income, okay? That way you'll always be assured you're contributing your maximum. Now, those last two columns on the right-hand side, this is the key area here for you to pay attention to. If you're working for someone, the contribution, the maximum contribution in your Canada Pension Plan is $3,500. But if you are self-employed, that means you are both the employee and you're the employer. You have to pay both sections. When you're working for someone else, the company also has to match what you're paying in Canada Pension Plan. So you are both, so you have to pay twice the amount. So in this case, the $7,000, okay? Now it's gonna get worse. In 2023, the pension plan is going up from 5.7% to 5.95. So no matter who you are, you're gonna pay more money for Canada towards Canada Pension next year in 2023. And the rate, the, con the combined rate is 11.9%. So that is a problem, right? If you're a business owner, you're going to be putting more and more money into this Canada Pension Plan to maintain your maximum contribution in order to have your maximum uh, benefit. Well, let's look at the cost versus benefit, okay? The maximum contributions, if you were to contribute from 2021, 39 years, because that's the calculation of CPP, you will have put in, meaning deposits, more than $300,000 over that 39-year period. So what's the benefit to you? When you retire at age 65, you're going to receive $14,000 if you had a maximum um, CPP. The, the, uh, the maximum right now is about, or the average is about $780. So not everybody's getting the maximum, um, $780 a month. Not everybody's doing the $1,203 a month Canada Pension Plan, but essentially you're getting $14,000 indexed around about 1% per year, and that'll be indexed for life. Now the break even, what does that mean? The break even point, I'm not talking about break even point if you take it early versus 65, I'm not talking, there's a slide in that. If you wanna go up here, you'll see a break even about uh, Canada Pension. What we're talking about is the break even point between your total deposits versus your withdrawals. How long does it take you to get your money back? 21 and a half years. So if you got your Canada Pension Plan at age 65, you would be 86 years old before you started to get other people's money. This is gonna be your money coming back to you, okay? Now, back to your question, Vivian. Should you be looking at other alternatives for creating retirement income? So that kind of is a tricky question, right? Because your Canada Pension Plan is based off of you having T4 income. So if you're if you have T4 income, there is no alternative. You are contributing your Canada Pension Plan. So to your question of, should I aggressively use RSP's tax-free savings account or CPP? Well, it's both. You're contributing to Canada Pension Plan and whatever money you have left over, you can divide that up into whether it's an RSP, a tax-free savings account, a non-registered program, or other types of assets that you might invest in. So let's look at this briefly real quick here. You're earning $50,000 per year, okay? That's your total pre-tax income. You're gonna pay about $10,000 in taxes and your CPP and your employment premiums, this is Ontario by the way, is $3,400. So your after-tax income is $40,000. So back to you, anybody who is in that range of paying yourself $50,000, it's not, it's, I don't mean to say that this is the only income, maybe it is, but it might be you're purposefully just paying yourself 50,000 because you said, you know, that's really what I need to have as an income stream um, for to fund my lifestyle choices. I don't need to pay myself more than that. I'll leave everything in the company. So again, is this a corporation or is it self-employed? 
Okay, so now, because if you're self-employed, every dollar comes in and is being taxed in your hands. So now when we look at what is the purpose of a CPP, the purpose is to replace a third of your pre-retirement income. It's to assist low-income earners in retirement, and it provides inflation-adjusted income throughout your retirement. This is really key here, the inflation-adjusted. People really, some people, discount Canada Pension because you think, well, it's such a small amount of money. It's a lot of money. It, uh, we've just demonstrated it's going to be well over $300,000 in your lifetime coming to you. And it goes up you know, with inflation. So in a uh, time that we have right now where inflation is above 5%, having inflation-adjusted income. Now, of course, they're not, adjust, they're, they're not adjusting inflation by 5% a year. Um, this you know, year was just over 2% inflation adjusted, but it is important to know that that income is going to be inflation adjusted over your retirement. So let's look at if there was an alternative and you were paying yourself um, CPP, if you were, or sorry, you weren't contributing to CPP. So this would be if you were investing what you would have contributed to CPP as a, a self-employed business owner. That means that you have zero T4 income or below $3,500, okay? And if you have zero T4 income, that means you're not going to receive Canada Pension Plan benefit when you go to retire and you will not accumulate RSP room. So you have to consider by trying to do this strategy, you're also discounting yourself from being able to do other types of investments okay but let's say you went the route of uh, you didn't have any income like that this is what it would look like you would have contributions let's say of six thousand dollars per year and that goes up by one percent per year and let's say you're 30 years old so you're contributing for 35 years and that investment inside of your tax-free savings account got five percent growth okay that's where we're getting these numbers from that's how that would look and then when you look at the four percent rule you would be withdrawing about $25,000 per year. So the 4% rule is what amount of money can you withdraw, 4% of your money, um, and to ensure that you're never going to run out of money. So this is what the 4% rule uh, looks at. So you can see here $25,000, and it goes up each year, and it goes all the way up to 41000 age 86. So at the end of your life, supposing you live to age 86, that is, you would have $700,000 in cash in today's dollars. Um, if you look at the inflation adjusted dollars, it's $177,000 35 years later, right? So that's important for you to know. So that means that this person is actually going to pass away with assets. So you could pay yourself more than that. But that's I, I'm putting this purposely because I want you to see what that 4%, how that looks in this particular example. Okay, so let's look at number two. Number two is the need for advice. Your question tells me that anybody who's in business for themselves really needs financial advice. It's creating a financial plan so you have clarity about what you should be doing with your money. What is the most effective use of your cash? Is it putting it into your business and uh, keeping the money inside your business and investing it inside your business? Is it paying yourself a dividend and a partially a salary or is it all T4 income? And in that environment, should I be using RSPs, tax-free savings accounts, non-registered accounts? Should I be using whole life insurance policies to take money out of my corporation? Should I invest in real estate? What would my corporate structure look like? All these questions can be encapsulated inside a financial plan. So that's why it's important that you get that done. Number three, this is also equally important, is will you sell your business at retirement? Is there a succession strategy that you're trying to employ? Meaning somebody's gonna take over your business, maybe a family member. And if that's the case, how are you going to get your money out? Because you're going to want to sell the business at a fair market value because you don't want Revenue Canada bothering you. And they're going to have to maybe take on debt. I'm not going to get into the idea. If you want to go up here to succession strategies for business owners, have a look at this video. But the idea is you may want to sell your business because you need the capital to retire on. So you need to understand what your exit strategy is. The fourth thing is retirement planning. Have a look at this slide. Retirement planning is a big word, but it looks at RSPs, tax-free savings account, non-registered investments, business income, pension income, Canada Pension Plan, old age security. It looks at all of your income sources in addition to hey, like a basket of other kinds of topics like taxation and estate planning. But essentially what we're looking at is if you want to have retirement success, you want to create multiple income streams in retirement. This is going to 
I don't want to say guarantee, but having multiple um, income streams that you can count on is definitely going to um, have longevity to your retirement and peace of mind, right? The final one, the fifth one, and this is around business versus personal. There's another video up here I'll link to. I'll put everything in the description as well. And it talks about the need for your business to have capital versus you having personally needing capital or your business needing a tax deduction versus you needing a, a tax deduction on your income. This is the really like the, the fundamental thing. The reason for this is <laughs> taxation. I love this picture. It's so cool. I, I think it's so great. The reason is taxation. People are trying to figure out what's the best way for me to use my money to accumulate the most amount of money and pay the least amount of taxes, right? And then at the same time, not eliminating any other options. Um, so for instance, if you didn't have T4 income, you're not creating RSP room. And if you're not creating RSP room, you can't use an individual pension plan for your business. So your, 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 your path, your conquest to paying less tax leads you down a path that um, totally eliminates other options for you. So you wanna be aware of that. That's the reason why you talk to an advisor. Okay, so again, tax strategy. Too many business owners choose T5 dividend income and have no alternative to investment for retirement planning. And eventually they realize that they're not gonna have a Canada pension plan, but they will be too late because you can't buy back time in a Canada pension plan. It's interesting to look at CPP as not as a tax, as more of like a pooled retirement plan run by an arm's length investment board separate from the government. This is really key for you to understand. We don't know what life is going to throw to us over that 35 years in business, right? We don't know how our business is going to work. We don't know what our health is going to be like. And so you're trying to make the best choices as possible to be able to acquire enough capital to be able to fund your retirement. So what I would encourage you to do is get with a financial advisor and talk to them about what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. And in doing so, you'll be able to work out a financial plan that you're going to actually have confidence in. You'll achieve a, a tremendous amount of clarity about how it's the best use of your money. And you'll be able to go about your business. The, and the second part of it is when you have a plan and you're working with an advisor, it's easier for you to switch directions real quick. If, if, the, if the headwinds of your employment or the economy changes, you can immediately go to the plan, immediately go to your advisor and say, what do we do now? What, what do we need to change? So that's why I encourage you to do that. If you need help with that, you know, there's about 5 million ways to contact me and I'll be, help, uh, be able to help you with a financial plan and talk to you about your own goals. Now, I want to say thanks so much for tuning in and watching this video today. I always say we take care of your wealth management so you can take care of what's most important to you. There's my contact information right there. If you have any questions, please put your comments below. Fire off those questions. I want to hear from you. I made a video just on a, a longtime supporter of the channel. So you can see I enjoy getting your feedback so I can give you what you're asking about. Thanks again for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.